In today's video, I'm gonna be a little bit selfish. I decided I'm gonna talk about my top five favorite tools inside of Luminar AI. Some of these you may know, some of them perhaps you haven't tried before. We'll give you a look at all of them and let you decide for yourself if this is something you need to get better results inside of Luminar AI. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a photographer just like you. Thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and start taking a look at some photographs and the tools that I like to use. Okay, this one is a raw photo um, out at Epcot in Orlando. And I had a really lovely evening here and you wouldn't know it to look at this photo. So we're gonna start off with, I think almost everybody's favorite and that is Enhance AI. And the reason I'm starting off with this is because it just does such a great job. I'm gonna take Accent AI up to about 50 and I'm gonna do the same thing with Sky Enhancer and with just two strokes, look at this before and after. That's where I was and that's where I am now. It's just hard to beat that kind of beautiful color, beautiful contrast, and a highly impactful result just from moving a slider or two. So that enhanced AI really is one of my top five. I try this on every photo. I'll tell you that enhanced AI doesn't always make it into every photo that I go with. Sometimes I look at the results and I think, all right, that's not exactly doing what I want to. But the majority of the time, it really works. It is so good that I always try it. And I almost always try it first. Sometimes I'll go to Composition AI and get my crop first because I like to work in a workflow of like texture, tone, and color. And to me, cropping is part of the texture. Why enhance something that you're going to cut out later? But I am always going to look at Enhance AI and the tools inside to see if that makes a good result for me. And the majority of the time, it really does. So number one, Enhance AI. My second favorite, or at least second on the list, this is not necessarily in any particular order, is going to be Super Contrast. And you're going to come down here, and you're going to see that there are uh, highlights contrast, mid-tone contrast, and shadows contrast. I kind of like to start towards the middle and maybe to one side or the other. So for this photo, I'm going to go a little bit on high contrast, a little beneath the center point on mid, and then I'm going to go on shadows contrast, kind of about the same thing. So I've it came up with a result of like 60, 40, and 60. And again, look at the difference. I'm going to toggle this on and off. That's where we were just after the Accent AI. And this is where we are now. The reds have really come out. You see the lighting in the tonal contrast range is really good. If you want to, you can play with the balance on each of these different little elements. So if I pull the shadows balance on to the left, it lightens it up. If I pull it over here, I get a little bit darker. I kind of like it where it was, but... I also like to play with this balance just to see what kind of result I get and does it help me out with what I really want to achieve. Sometimes I like the result, sometimes I don't, but all you've got to do is click a slider and see what happens. And nine out of 10 times, you get a better result using this tool. And I think I actually get better results more often with Super Contrast than I do with the first one when we were looking over here with the Enhanced AI. Both wonderful tools. I will always look at Enhanced AI and I will always look at Super Contrast, particularly for a landscape or travel photo. I think the results that you get at a Super Contrast can have another dramatic impact. So long as we're looking at a travel or landscape type of photo, this is another one. It's not going to go in every photo, but I like sun rays. So let me go ahead and click on this. And you can see there's an option here to place the sun center. So I'm looking at the lighting that's over here and you can tell the sun is kind of back over here. I'm going to bring this little white dot down here to this horizon line because the sun should be just kind of out of uh, view. But also I like the idea of having this kind of inside of the Tory gate. And I'll start off with a little bit of an amount. I might even go 50% just to see where everything is. And then I can tone the overall look based upon how it affects the photo. So if I it made things a little bit dark there, I didn't want to do that. I don't really need that much of an amount. What I want on this photo is probably just a little bit of a glow. I want some warmth. I want the sun rays to be warm because this is a sunset and you would expect that. And then I just kind of toggle, like, you know, as far as the penetration, do I want these rays just really bursting out of here? And in this case, it don't. It's supposed to, it's supposed to be kind of a mild sunset. I don't want the rays going that long as far as what we had kind of overextending over here. I might even pull this back a little bit more. And I can look at the sun radius. It doesn't need to be that much. It's just a little bit of an enhancement. 
And but I want a little bit more glow, I think. So you can tell it's just something right over the horizon. So in other words, it's almost like if you're not looking for it, maybe you don't know it's there. I'd, I'd probably tone down these rays a little bit. So let me pull that back and randomize this. So I'll pull back the number of sun rays. And you can get this down to, I think, one. But the idea is just have a little bit of presence back here. And I'm going to turn this off and turn it on. And it, you can see that it just makes a little bit of a difference. It, it's another element of your photograph that adds some interest. Now, you can put the sun up in the sky if it makes sense for that kind of photograph that you have. This one, it needs to be a little bit below the horizon line. But that is probably going to be my third favorite tool for photos where it works. Obviously, for a portrait photograph, it may not be the right thing because you're not going to have sun rays coming up maybe in a studio environment. It depends where you are. But if you've got an outdoor scene, I think the sun rays can be very interesting. All right, if you know me, you know I had to get a portrait in here. And look, this is a really nice portrait. It doesn't need much, but I think there's always something that we can do. So Face AI is going to be one of my tools that I really like to go for. And look at Face Light. You can see that the light on her face is nice. We've got a very white background. I kind of want to brighten up her face just a little bit, not a whole lot. I mean, if we bring it all the way over here, it's, it's like too much. But right here, it's just a little bit. Sometimes I'll go with slim face. I don't think she needs it. I mean, if we can try it out, it slims her a little bit, but I don't think that's really necessary here. But what I really love about the face tool is working with the eyes. We don't really need to whiten her teeth. We could maybe do uh, some settings on her lips. That's really to taste. It's not that it's correction of anything. It's an enhancement based on what you want. But the eyes... I really love this one, Iris Flare, and I kind of like to bring this over. Take a look right in here. Matter of fact, let me zoom in a little bit, and we'll take a look at the Iris Flare. And you see that little bit of highlight that just came up here at the bottom of her iris. I love that. And likewise, I also like to enlarge the eyes a little bit. So we'll click that, and her eye just gets a little bit larger. We engage with portraits through people's eyes. I mean, I love a good smile. I love a nice face, but it's really the eyes that draw me in. And enlarging the eyes is just a way of adding a little bit more presence. And a little bit of eye whitening. She's, her, there's nothing wrong with her eye whites, but one click and they can be just a little bit better. Now, as much as I love the iris flare, this eye enhancer is another one that just kind of adds contrast and sparkle in someone's eyes. And you can take it too far. We might be getting a little bit gritty in there, but I can just pull that right back. Now, correction tools are like red eye removal and dark circles remover. And even the improved eyebrows, we don't need them in this photograph. It's nice that they're there, but what I really love about this in the face AI is face light. I want the iris flare. I want to enlarge the eyes. I want eye whitening, and I want the eye enhancer. There are times I'll play with changing the iris color. So if she's got a blue eye. We can make it even more blue. We can change her eyes to green. But honestly... I, I never really work with an owl or a cat. I'm not trying to change somebody into something that she's not. Those are kind of gimmicks in my mind. But if someone's got a, a good photograph, I think the original eye color works well, and these little tools down here can really help bring them out and just give you the best results. All right, on our last photo, I just want to show you one more thing. We're going to start off, actually, with our number one. We're going to go up here to Enhance AI. Again, I'm going to bring this up. This is kind of in the middle for both of them, and look what a presence that really gives them. But... The thing that I really like, and this works on portraits, it works on landscapes, is to come down here to glow. And it'll default to soft focus, but I really like the glow effect. I like adding just a little bit. And you see how it really brightens and flattens everything out, but you can control that. You can add a little bit of contrast. You can take away some of the brightness. You can add a little bit of warmth. And you still get some softness from the glow. And look at what a change we've made. So I'm going to turn this off. That's where we were. And then with the glow, it kind of brightens up the clouds. It brightens up everything. If you're looking for, you don't want to go high key with your photo, but you want a bright, lively, maybe a lifestyle kind of photograph, I would say glow is really good for portraits to add a lifestyle kind of look. I also use it with landscapes. And there's just something about some places where maybe around sunset, sunrise, you give it a little bit of glow and you've already got that soft lighting that's coming in from one side or the other of your subject, 
you add a little bit of a glow, you bring in some of these changes, and you can really shape your photograph and just make it look appealing. Okay, so those are my top five filters or tools inside of Luminar AI. We went over Enhanced AI. We went down and looked at Super Contrast. We looked at Face AI. We looked at Glow and also sun rays. I really like the sun rays. I don't use sun rays on every photo, but they really can enhance your photographs and, and just really give you something a little bit special. It can be subtle, it can be outrageous, whatever you want it to be, but those are my favorite tools that I try to look at on my photographs. If this was helpful to you, thanks so much for being here. Please click the like button. That lets YouTube know that we've done something right. They'll recommend it to more people, and I can keep on making more videos. Out of these five tools, which ones would be your favorite? Do you use these or do you have others that you like better? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video.